on that giant. <laughs> Hey guys, Bradley Holman here. Welcome back to Falcon Rod Channel. I told you guys that we were going to have some videos coming at you, and we have. We got I've done this is my third one, and I know that Jason's done three or four. We've got a lot of guys making videos and content for you guys, so really appreciate y'all being here. Today, we are in downtown Oklahoma City, right in the heart of OKC. It is middle July, and today is going to be all about the jig. I haven't been out here in over a year. Um, really don't know which jig i'm going to fish just like we don't know what we're going to run into on the bank we just passed a homeless guy back there taking a bath in the lake as we get on around here there's going to be walkers joggers i mean this thing is in downtown so same thing with the people we don't know what to expect with the fish either the lake's a little bit high so i do expect you're going to see some willow trees and some bush flipping along with some rock uh, with the jack dragging a jig and maybe even a little bit of offshore stuff we're going to mix it all up as far as offshore um, on the bank it's all going to be about the jig you guys hold on Wasn't even on a willow. Was that a cottonwood? Little brown jig. Little brown jig. They are good fish in this pond. Come here. Long skinny summer fish. That's good stuff. I don't know why. Like, I'm not trying to flip today. Like, I'm just going around throwing an LBJ, and this is what it turns into. And I'm looking in front of me, and I'm thinking that there's another three or four on some bushes that we're coming up to. And I just fished, like, 25 docks and couldn't get a bite. And we flipped the third tree that we flipped all day and catch a nice long one. She's just, like, just now healing up from the, from the spawn. Tail still a little flat from the spring. So I started out the day with that that little brown jig, which is a ball headed jig. And it's built for, you know, for me personally, it's an all around go anywhere, but it's a rock. I love to skip it around docks. Brush piles are okay with it. Um, I don't mind doing that. I've caught lots of fish around brush with it. We got into here to something that looks like this and uh, I got to switch up. I have to go something with a different, a different style head, something that will slip in and out of the cover is still a brown jig it's the same thing we were throwing it's got a little bit heavier hook we've got a different rod um, this is a seven foot four amistad extra heavy um, just a lot more muscle because what happened was is i tried to stay with that little brown jig on that 610 rod that i use for skipping all the time first cast into the heart of some of those willow trees where it's really thick that ball head jig just stays hung up it's like a constant battle that you fight um, the, probably one of the biggest reasons you don't see guys slip jigs as often as you see guys flipping plastics and things is that all jigs, including one even with this style head, it's, it's much more cantankerous to get it in and out of bushes. Brush, willow trees, they tend to hang up a lot more. The ball head jig for sure. So we switched up, gone to this, this, this flipping jig here just to try to streamline, uh, make it a little more in and out just so we can be a lot more efficient throughout our day. Uh, the profile and the size of it are about the same. They're both half ounce. Got the exact same trailer on it with brown skirt. So really the only thing that's different is the lead and the style of hook that it's tied to. I get a question from time to time from guys that are a little newer to the sport or live in parts of the country that don't have all this hand-to-hand -hand combat. Why, why flip, you know, or why the technique flipping? Why is it so big with a lot of you guys? And like I say, I mean, we came out here, I was honestly planning on doing some offshore fishing in July, but as you can see, you know, with what, what we've been dealt, water's high, fish are up shallow, and um, why flip? So really, it's really just got more to do with, you know, how, how much time on the water, I, how, mu how productive can I be with my time on the water? I guess that's really what it is. And for me, hand-to-hand -hand combat up close like this, um, being able to flip, and I say flip, I see this some a lot too. Um, I think all of us guys that that enjoy this style of fishing still call it flipping. Even though, you know, the old style, like, you know, was more of a scissor scissor flip, you know, and you don't see guys doing that as much. Um, 
the advent of high speed reels and stuff when guys were doing that back then and they were really big on the five to one gear ratios um that you saw doing that scissor flip you still see it a little bit in florida just because it's such a target rich environment there's just so many places that you know every foot is a is a hole that um a fish might not have seen your bait a foot over so you may see it there a little bit but um places like this the, the high potential spots more like just the base of that that tree right there um it's just easier to make a longer pitch style cast even though we're all still calling it flipping it's still an under can roll cast uh, presentation that we're using and primarily it's basically just the, for the simple fact of covering water being efficient with your day and uh, maximizing me getting as many casts out of the short time that we had during the during the day of fishing Biggin. I mean the kind we came after, baby. That is a slaunch. Stay out of that tree. Put your hands on that giant. <laughs> yeah so a lot of times there's some really special waterways right on our front doorstep and guys are going two hours three hours to all these big impoundments that you read about in all these articles whether it be grand lake or gunnersville clear lake i mean that fish is six pounder she's in a, a foot of water on a really flat bank this morning we pulled up on it because it was had some really nice wind on it it's facing the west so it's shaded a little bit longer this morning and that's a really 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 nice fish it's also why i want to do this show about the jig the jig will just get you quality bites i mean day in and day out even in the heat of the summer jigs work quality and that's a that's one of them beautiful fish her tail is still worn off and red from spawning this spring. Beautiful. Besides the jig really matters to me. Um, fall rate's a big deal. Anytime I'm fishing something that I'm flipping, pitching, or jig that's falling, fall rate's more important to me than what color it is. Um, to me, it's, it's what makes you break it. So anyway, it's summertime and, and the fish metabolism is pretty high. This is a half ounce jig. I'm only fishing in a foot of water. But I'm looking for something real quick. I don't want them to make a decision. Uh, in the springtime, a lot of times around the spawn, we use a quarter or a lighter jig. Get that slow fall, something that they kind of have to stare at for a while, but not this time of year. And I just, you know, I want to cover that because I do think that fall rate's a, a big deal right now for sure. It's going to be one of them days. Solid little keeper. Rip for the mouth. We're gonna have a good day, I think. I'm really expecting a couple of big ones. I got her there and finally I was like, I know that's a bass. Do not give them slack like that in a tournament. <laughs> Get her head up. It's a big one. Three pounder. They're eating that jig good now, man. Right in the top of the head, just like you like them. That's the only way I got her out of there. That was where that heavier action rod paid off. That that Amistad extra heavy, as opposed to just having an Amistad. That fish buried up in that tree like that, and the boat going by so fast made a huge difference so we uh we just made a move it's it's mid-morning we've had a pretty successful early morning we've got a couple of good bites and i lost one even really nice one too but i'm starting to kind of notice a pattern with inside a pattern and it's something you hear guys talk about it's it's 
it's pretty, it comes pretty fast for me if I'm really shallow like this, something that I can see, that I can relate to. It, it helps me develop this pattern faster, but we are catching them out of willow trees, but it's not just every willow tree. There's, there's a lot of willow trees in this lake and there's a lot of them that I would consider really pretty most of the time of the year, but right now they tend to be a little bit too deep. They're more on the steeper side of the, the banks that have got long overhanging horizontal limbs and those really aren't the ones that we're getting bit on. We're really getting bit on the really, really super shallow flat, just like this sticking out here on a point by itself. Um, this is a flat point coming out. And then I also know right around this bend, there's some more of that flat water where those willow trees are in there, where these fish are only sitting in about a foot of water, but the boat's only sitting in about two foot of water. So it being July, a lot of guys, it, these fish would be easy to pass up, but that's really what they're preferring right now. They're not on the, the prototypical stuff that's got a little bit of drop to it where they've got faster access to deep water. What the, what's actually, when I see this happen is generally when the water is extremely high and that's really where this place is for this lake. Um, this is high, it doesn't get much higher than this. The spillway won't allow it to, but um, the water's extremely high here. This is a really, really high level right now for, for Lake Hefner. And that's exactly what's going on. These fish have pushed all the way to the very top of the flat. He turned on that sucker. Where'd he go? Dude, that was a good one. I thought it was carp. Yeah, he was up there swimming at the top of the surface. I really did. I thought it was a carp and I swam it by him and he turned right on it. There he is. He went after too. Sight fishing. <laughs> Look at that sucker. How about them apples? Golly, what a fish. Told you the big one. Look at that stud. <laughs> He's just floating around hungry, wasn't he? Big old mouth. Floating around hungry. That fish reminds me of these fish that we find sometimes in the summertime. They're kind of sick looking. See how thin he is? And they spend a lot of time at the surface and guys will be like, hey, look at that sick fish, but they never make a cast. Make a cast. Might be worth it. A lot of times when the sun gets high like this, it's really a, it's a good part of the day because it, it shrinks up the, the strike zone or shrinks up the place that it could, they could sit, right? Like I want in the darkest, shadiest, spot there is in a bush or a tree it just positions them to where it's not a needle and it really helps position those fish put them tight to the cover and it makes it easy to see like where the best cast is Golly. i just saw it flash right when i flipped in there That was another three pounder. Oh, this is cool too, dude. You gotta check this out. See my jig and then the shaky head where the guy got broke off. <laughs> Isn't that cool? She's had that in there a while too. See where it's worn that sore on her? We'll take that out. Little shaky head in there. She's had that in her a while. Another three pound chunk, flipping in the summertime. So it's all about the jig today, guys. Flipping and uh, summertime, I'm a stod extra heavy, 25 pound test line and drag set on get your butt in the boat. That's what it's been like. Don't forget, hit that like, bump the subscribe and uh, guys, till next time, we're out of here.